folks and welcome to my latest video where I'm uh, experimenting with the return to home behaviour of my Track Disco. So I've got the loiter altitude set at 50 metres and then in the safety settings I've got a, a uh, no geofence uh, max altitude of 150 metres and return to home after 11 seconds. So let's get the disco in the air and begin our testing. up we go. So it's not the ideal uh, weather for testing this but uh, it's, and it's getting towards uh, towards dark but I have quite a lot of confidence in the disco and uh, I've got some lights on it as well so I'm happy to do this. So the first test I'm going to do and I've just speeded up the film now I'm going to fly it out at, um, and fly it up above its loiter height which was 50 meters and hit return to home and see what happens. So it's turning around in order to return home and it's returning home at the height that it was at when I triggered the return to home. So it's returning home at 100 meters there and then when it gets to the home point um, you can see the loiter icon goes to green there and it starts to circle and descend to its loiter height or at least its loiter height plus a few meters there and then for this one I'm flying it out and I'm going to see what happens if I go below the loiter height and hit return to home so again it's turning around as you'd expect it's climbing and it's climbing past its loiter height it's so it's climbed to a hundred meters um, and there's no setting there to say return to home height 100 meters um, that's obviously a, a built-in setting that you can't change uh, so yeah returning to home at 100 meters and then of course once it gets back to the home point it's loitering again and descending to its loiter height or thereabouts so let's just see what happens if uh, we hit return to home from above that uh, 100 meter height, which seems to be uh, some sort of inbuilt return to home height. So let's hit return to home. Turning around. Lovely view of the uh, sunset there over, over the clouds. And there were actually there's some low level cloud from, uh, from the sea coming in here. Uh, we're not that high as you can see but it's sticking to the height it was at it's not gone to that 100 meter height it's sticking to the height it was at when it returned home and it's waiting till it gets to the return home height and then it's uh, descending to its loiter height so obviously if um, in my experience if you've been at a very high height it can actually take quite a while because it doesn't descend that quickly compared to how quickly you can descend Anyway, so this next experiment, I'm going to show what happens when you fly the disco outside of its controller range. So I've speeded this up a bit. As you can see, I'm going to fly offshore where there's no interference. Get my maximum range. Flying off the edge of the world there, it looks like, on the map. And I'm um, not sure if you can quite make it out there. Um, but there's a sort of fog bank offshore there, which, it, which we're heading towards. Um, 0.6 kilometers out, still going. Obviously, this bit is speeded up again, and uh, you'll notice that the um, range indicator turns red when you go over two kilometers. Um, but nevertheless, it still behaves normally. We're in the fog bank now, and um, despite that, you know, we've still got uh, reasonably good signal. The plane's responsive and getting good video feed. But we'll find as we get to sort of 3.4 kilometers. Uh, it, the video feed is getting a bit, is breaking up there a bit, and um, in a minute or a second, I should say, it's going to cut out. So not connected. So now is the bit um, which, if you've done any long-range flight plans, you'll be used to uh, is the sitting and waiting part. And uh, if you're not used to it, it can be a, a bit nerve-wracking. But um, I've developed quite a lot of faith in my disco, um, uh, so. I'm, this sort of thing doesn't bother me. I know uh, it will return to home after that 11 second trigger and there we are. Recovered signal at 
3.2 kilometers so we didn't recover it straight away at 3.4 um, and I've often found that when it's um, returning um, the distance at which you lose the signal compared to where you get it back there's quite a difference um, so it's returning to home at 150 meters which is interesting because we weren't at that height when it returned to home um, so let's just dive down and uh, back below 100 meters and see what sort of and then manually trigger the return to home again and see what it does yep, turn down somewhere between the loiter height and the return to home height so we can see what it's going to do and uh, hit the return to home and oh it's ascended to 150 meters again so it's not doing what it did before which was going to 100 meters it's now going to 150 meters or thereabouts uh, but maybe that's because it's more than two kilometers out so let's try that again um, now we're within the two kilometer zone let's dive back down to below loiter height uh, sorry between loiter height and that 100 meter return to home height it was doing before and hit the return to home and see what happens it's climbing and it's gone back to 150 meters again so that's some interesting behavior isn't it it's i don't know if that's because it's lost connection at one at one point it's doing that or because it's been so far out um but nevertheless it's, it's got a different return to home altitude now it would appear so now we're less than a kilometer away let's just see if it's still doing that or if it's it's now gone back to the 100 meter return to home height so we'll dive back down to that 75 meter see what happens It's ascending, and it's, yeah, it's gone back up to 100, 150 meters. So yes, yeah, some uh, interesting behaviour there. Um, I think it's really important that you understand how your disco is going to behave if you're going to be doing long-range flights, um, so you can predict what's going to happen when, you, if and when you lose control. So yeah, it's come back to the home point, and then it's uh, descending again. So. Um, yeah, some unusual behaviour there, um, but as I say, it's important to understand what it's going to do. And um, in my experience, you know, it always turns around and comes home when something goes wrong, whether you trigger that yourself or um, it loses connection, and it's, it quite reliably gets home. But you do have to understand what it's going to do in case you there's a hill in the way or something like that. You don't want it to. It's not going to fly around it or over it. It's going to go through 150 metres or 100 metres and try and come back home. So you need to plan your flights accordingly. So uh, just coming in for a gentle landing. And thank you very much for watching my video. Hope uh, it's been informative and given you a bit of confidence. Cheerio.